Hi everyone, Nicole Spore here with another Stamp Timber exclusive limited edition stamp project. This time featuring the Riley and Company True Friends stamp set for an interactive camera pull tab card. So I'm really excited to combine one of my very favorite releases release products from the last few months, which is the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris Camera Add-on. So you can make interactive cards with this, whether it's the iris or a pull tab, there's a couple different options there, or you can use the camera on its own. And I'm gonna combine that with this exclusive limited edition set. Remember with the exclusive limited edition sets, they are only available while supplies last and then they are gone. So I am sharing this card in the hopes that it might inspire you to use stamps that you already have on hand if you miss out on this stamp set or if you have something similar at home. That's why I try, I've been really trying um, with my Stamp Timber projects to use other products that I might have on hand, that you guys might have on hand, that you would like to see used in new ways. So this is one of my favorite things today, which is combining multiple companies' products into one card. I love that um, it's just kind of a great little test to see what can you do, what can you create with the products you might already have. Now I stamped the cute, cute image here from the Riley and Company True Friends stamp set on some Nina heavyweight cardstock that I've trimmed down to fit behind the Magic Iris Camera pull tab add-on. So it's this little like inst Instax uh, frame. And I went ahead and just stamped it on that size of cardstock so I would kind of know where the frame is gonna fall. And then I went ahead and stamped a mask for this using some Simon Says Stamp masking paper. And I wanna make sure that I trim the mask well. And I'm gonna tell you, I didn't do so good to start with. Um, I kind of forgot that there were gonna be areas down low that I was also going to need to ink. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I think I was thinking that some of that down near their feet wasn't gonna be seen in the frame, but it actually is. It does pull quite a ways out, depending on where you make the little slider track and things for the pull tab. And so I really should have just cut the whole mask out. That's the long story short. I, I tried to cheat a little bit because you guys know me, if I don't have to fussy cut, I won't. And really, in this case, I should have. I used a piece of post-it tape for the ground, and you're gonna see that here in a minute. I'm using Peacock Feathers and Chipped Sapphire Distress Inks to ink the background of this. You could also color it in with Copic markers if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna flip that little post-it tape up. And this is where I realized, what was I doing? Because I need to ink the ground, so I'm gonna have to kind of carefully peel up my mask and I went ahead and cut it. It wasn't ideal, but it ended up working, so it's all good. I also noticed I missed a couple other little spots trimming out my image, so I will have to get creative with that as I color in these cute little critters. The great thing about this card today is I'm hoping that it inspires you that if you picked up the Magic Iris camera here in the last few months, that it inspires you to look at your stamp collection and maybe use those stamps that you have that are not Lawn Fawn. Just because the dies we're using today are Lawn Fawn and we all love our Lawn Fawn products so much, and yes, they work perfect with the this die set, but so do a lot of other stamps that we have. And I'm hoping that that is what inspires you today to create some really fun interactive camera card designs. I'm gonna color in our cute little moose first. Isn't he so, so cute? I don't know what it is about these little moose like this. I actually have some like, I believe they're Boyd's Bears moose. Um, I've had them for probably almost 20 years. Uh, Christmas plush and they are my favorites. <laughs> Every year when I pull them out of my Christmas bucket, I love them. I still love them. 
And this little guy totally reminds me of them. And I think that's what I like about him so much. In fact, I think he'd be really cute if you find a stamp image of like a Santa hat or a stocking cap, which tons of companies have. In fact, Lawn Fawn probably has anything we need in that area. And you could actually do some really creative masking and make all of these little guys have some holiday attire. And I think that would be cute too. I have listed my Copic colors that I'm using across the top of the screen. I am still going Copic strong. I don't know what it is. Um, I go in phases, but I know I had had so many requests from people saying, I love when you color with your zigs, but I'd really like to see more projects with Copics. And it isn't that I didn't love them. It, I think it's just that I get going with one coloring medium and then I'm really enjoying it. And so I just go in phases. It ebbs and it flows um, like anything, but I've really been loving them again lately. So I've been using a lot of that. I've listed all the colors I'm using across the top of the screen. As always, you can find that information on my coordinating blog post that goes with this video. So if at any time you want to kind of see those colors, maybe in a little slower motion so they're not speeding by on the screen or want to reference those, you can find that information there. Lots of neutrals here, but with the pretty blue background and then the bright green of the grass, I think it really all comes together. The cat's little face is so funny, I think. It looks like he's up to no good. And then of course, Simon. I love that Simon is incorporated here because it's just so amazing. Um, it's a collaboration set, so I think that just really makes it special and fun. And I love the friendship theme of this and the um, inclusivity theme. I just think it really is a fun stamp set. Now, this stamp set has a bunch of kind of snarky sentiments in it, which I think are funny. So while I'm finishing coloring, I'm just gonna read the ones I didn't use. I love having you for a friend. That one's not snarky. That one's actually pretty nice. I craft in my yoga pants. That's for my friend, Jill. She would like that. Uh, to relieve stress, I do yoga. Just kidding. And then two tips on your birthday. Forget the past. You can't change it. And number two, forget the present. I didn't get you one. Happy birthday. I think that's kind of cute and clever. I'm going to be using You Are a True Friend. Thank you for always being there for me, especially when I can't afford a therapist. So I thought that was really fun. And quite frankly, I went with whatever would fit my, my card design because I thought all the, the sentiments were fun. I'm going to put some thin adhesive all the way around the border of my background now that I have it colored in. You'll notice I feathered in some grass. That was to give the landscape down by the critter's feet a little bit more texture than the inking. And then we're simply gonna pop that little piece back behind our little Instax type frame. This is from the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris Camera Pull Tab Add-on. And we're going to add detail to the eyes, nose, all the things on the critters with a black jelly roll pen. We'll add some white pen detail for like the little whiskers on the cat's cheeks. Um, when the black on the eyes dries all the way, and I know I didn't catch it on, on camera, I did go back with a white pen and add the highlights back in. And if you want to, you can always reference your stamp set to see where those should go. Now that we have our frame ready to go, let's set that aside and it's time to start die cutting all the components for our camera. Now the camera actually is pretty easy to put together. I think it takes one or two times. And after you've done that, I think your mind instantly goes to what else can I make? <laughs> How else can I decorate this camera? At least for me it does, because I think the camera is fun. I have a video that I'm gonna share at the end of this one where I did a really, really detailed scene incorporating the camera so it's all kind of seamless. And I will link to that again at the end of this video. So if you wanna see this camera used in another way. Now, these stripes, these are created from cardstock using the Mama Elephant Quick Stripes die set. If you wanna make stripes of four different widths, this is the second smallest, this set is 
amazing. I love it. It's totally a basic and so it doesn't look exciting, but I use it all the time, you guys. In fact, you're going to see it again soon. I love this. I went ahead and put my stripes clear across the camera. The camera's die cut from Lawn Fawn Dolphin cardstock. I put the stripes across. I'm going to run it back through my die cutting machine so that I get that nice stitching detail and so that it stitches the circle out of the center. And look at our cute camera now. Our camera is this nice little neutral with these beautiful little stripes. And I really went for not a super feminine type of style for this card. I thought that would be really fun to try to stretch it and do a different color combination. And then I'm going to take my sentiment from the True Friends exclusive by Riley and Company, and we're gonna stamp that along the bottom edge of the card. And yes, that scripty sentiment is gonna go across some of the stripes. And in order to make that stamp really well, I very highly recommend using a Misty, using a stamp positioner of some sort, because I stamped it twice with my embossing ink I heat embossed with white embossing powder, and then I went ahead, put it back in my Misty, and I stamped it again, and heat embossed with white embossing powder again, just to make sure that my sentiment is super legible, super easy to read, and it ties into the design. I, I didn't want it to be so stark, like I didn't choose black ink or whatever, because I didn't want it to be like, bam, here is your sentiment. I wanted it to really kind of be a part of the design of the card. It's something that I'm really passionate about and I'm passionate about it in my all of my card videos, and I don't know if I talk about it enough, is color choice as far as sentiment goes when you're creating a scene card and you don't want it to be like, wow, there's the sentiment, you know, and it doesn't tie into anything else in the card. I really like to try to find a way or find ways to pick color choices or embossing powder choices that work with the rest of the design. Okay, we have a background that I did die cut from an outside in stitched rectangle using a new Lawn Fawn Into the Woods pattern paper. So we've got a wood grain pattern paper to go in the background. And from that, we are going to use the Magic Iris camera pull tab add-ons. So I, I use the add-on in the top of the camera to die cut the slot. And then we're gonna die cut from our background as well. I'm also layering on the pieces. Now, one big bummer about this sentiment that I couldn't really find another way to fix is that the ring that goes around our the lens of our camera is going to kind of go over part of the sentiment. Well, I don't want to not be able to read the sentiment, so I super carefully glued it down, but didn't put glue under that little area right there, and I very, very carefully took some scissors and just snipped a little straight line right along the line of the quick stripe, and that worked. We're gonna back then the lens with a scrap piece of white paper, also the little flash there, or not the flash, the little ready light maybe is what that is, the flash I already um, attached over on the right side. We're gonna replace the lens, it has great little die cuts so it looks like it's a highlight because we put that white cardstock behind, and then we're gonna put a little red button there. The shutter button, we will adhere in a bit that in fact I think is the last thing I did but I went ahead and layered those two cardstock pieces together. Let's set our camera aside for a second and let's take that background that I was talking about that I die cut from the Into the Woods pattern paper using an outside in stitched rectangle and we're going to use the little pull tab add-on and the slider track to die cut these and I'm die cutting the slider track from the center and I wanna line up the center of this little tab with the center of the panel with that track, and we're gonna die cut both of those. And it's only gonna die cut the little track up at the, or the little notch at the top, rather, and the notch. It's not gonna die cut anything along that straight line. 
Then this is the Let's Toast pull tab add-on. This has been out for a couple years now, at least. And I love that it's another way to use this with another set. So it works with this magic iris camera pull tab. We're going to assemble that. We're gonna put the little track stabilizer in place. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I removed the track stabilizer and I'm going to adjust that. I didn't feel, I felt like it was stopping my Instax photo way too far down. I wanted to see more of our cute Riley and company image come up out of the camera. So I adhered it and luckily I adhered it with um, a tape runner so I could use some undo adhesive to remove it. But I really wanted to share the difference and how I fixed that and how I adjusted that. And so if you guys run into a similar pro problem when you're doing a pull tab like this, maybe you can do the same thing. Let's go ahead and attach our camera, or pardon me, our Instax photo. And then we can put the camera over it and when you see it move, you're gonna see what the thing, what the deal is. I need to put some foam adhesive squares along the sides of the camera. So we'll just flip that over really quick because it's so much easier to move our photo up and down if you have a little bit more room and these adhe foam adhesive squares do that just along the sides. We don't want it to impede the photo movement. And then as we go to place the camera on our background with the track, we wanna slide the photo through the top, then go ahead and place our camera down where we want it to go. And then we can pull the photo up and down and see how it's stopping. It's because that stopper that I just put on the back of this panel is stopping it. And it just that's fine I'm, for most things, but it wasn't going up as far as I wanted it to. So this is a little undo adhesive remover. I'm gonna pop it off. And I will tell you, I fiddled and fiddled thinking I could make this work and I couldn't. So what I'm going to actually do is when I pull off this little secure piece. I'm going to cut it in half so that it's not as wide and it makes all the difference in the world. I still have the stabilizer piece. I still have this track piece. It's still going to hold everything in place. It's going to serve as a stopper so the photo doesn't come all the way out. But by trimming it in half, it's going to work so much better. And I will show you that here in just a second. I kept trying to make it work and I just couldn't. I did push the pull tab track or uh, pull tab all the way down, cut it flush with the top of this pattern paper, and I'm adding the die cut tab so that has the little arrow. We're going to inlay a little arrow into that so that it tells the recipient this does something, that it's interactive. I will do that first. I'm kind of waiting for the undo to dry because as long as it's wet, it's really hard to get adhesive to stick to it. And let's go ahead and just pull this off. I thought I would use a little liquid glue, but I noticed right away that it still wasn't gonna pull up high enough. So let's pop it off. We're gonna take our scissors and we're just gonna trim that in half. So it's the same mechanism, but it's just not near as wide. Hopefully that will help you guys if you are ever doing something similar and you find a problem like that where maybe your pull tab isn't coming as far as you want. If you just cut that little stabilizer piece a little thinner, hopefully that will work. So I'm just gonna secure that now and we've got our little Instax pull tab all ready to go. I am loving how this is looking. Let's add some little heart accents here. I'm just gonna do a little trio of white hearts. I think they add a nice little fun decorative touch to our card. Get them laid out where I want them to go and then we will use an embellishment wand and some glue tube liquid adhesive to pop those up and put those in place. 
we need to place this whole panel then on a white side fold card base. And we need to add our little button. But because I have raised the camera up with foam adhesive along the sides, I want to add the button with foam adhesive. So I'm going to put some little foam adhesive under this as well. Please be sure when you are adding this panel to your card base, do not put adhesive too close to that track so that the track still moves freely back behind that panel. Here's that foam adhesive that I was talking about that I'm placing on our little shutter button. And then we can pop that up right there on the left side of the card. And that is going to be it. That is going to totally finish our interactive camera pull tab friends card featuring the Simon Says Stamp 2020 Stamp Timber Riley and Company exclusive limited edition stamp set called True Friends. I hope this has inspired you guys to think about using some stamps you have in your stash and maybe mixing and matching different companies for truly unique cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. The products I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring, or another video featuring the Lawn Fawn magic iris camera add-on that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am so glad you're here and we will see you next time.